Welcome, we will start with class 11 geography, the chapter 8 that talks about the composition and the structure of atmosphere. Now we have covered atmosphere in detail in a separate lecture, but here we would try to focus on a fundamental idea as to why we need to study environment, what are the various components and the structure. Now if we think, we will find that most of our time we devote is in breathing activity and that is something that goes unnoticed. Next to that we have drinking which has a higher frequency than eating. So you have eating with the least frequency and breathing with the maximum frequency. Therefore, it's very very important to understand the importance of air and study about the atmosphere as such. So 99% of the mass of the atmosphere occurs in the top 32 kilometers of the surface. So if I start from the ground up to 32 kilometers, you have maximum of the atmosphere mass that is confined and which is 99%. Now as we know the gas that we breathe in is colorless, odorless and if it blows with a very uh, slow speed we call it wind, if it is fast we call it storm. So you have different names based on the frequency of the air that is blowing. So a blowing air is known as wind. Now when we talk about the composition Oxygen is not present beyond 120 kilometers. So if I move 120 kilometers up from the ground, beyond that there would be no oxygen that would be present and beyond 90 kilometers I would have no carbon dioxide and water vapor that would be present or water that would be present. So if we look by composition, the maximum volume of the gas that is present in the atmosphere is nitrogen followed by oxygen. Then you have argon and then the trace amounts of carbon dioxide, neon, helium, krypton, uh, xenon and hydrogen. So you have the maximum volume that occurs in the form of nitrogen followed by oxygen. However, when we say carbon dioxide amount is increasing in the atmosphere, we are talking about the uh, increase in the the minute amount that we can see here which is less than even a 0.1% so it's 0.036% which is nearly negligible if we talk in that sense. But still carbon dioxide is a very interesting gas. Now what, what is the uniqueness of carbon dioxide? This carbon dioxide that is present in the atmosphere is kind of transparent to all the rays that are coming in. So all the insulation, the incoming solar radiations, it is transparent and it does not allow the outgoing radiation. So what is happening is most of it is being absorbed on the earth. So above the earth within few kilometers you have the carbon dioxide that is trapped in and this trapped carbon dioxide is responsible for the greenhouse effect and therefore it is also known as one of the major greenhouse gases. This volume, how does this increase? This carbon dioxide increases in the atmosphere due to burning of fossil fuels, then due to industrial waste, the industrial pollution that is being occurred, the household pollution, the process of formation of electricity, all these processes lead to increase in the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and this carbon dioxide raise, rises the temperature. Now what about ozone? Ozone as we know occurs between 10 to 50 kilometers. Now what does it does? Ozone is again a very interesting gas because if it occurs in lower layers of atmosphere, it is considered as a pollutant. However, if it occurs in the upper layer of the atmosphere, it protects the harmful ultraviolet rays from entering into the earth and protects us from the harmful impacts of ultraviolet. These could be in the form of skin cancers and so on. So therefore, ozone is again very very important because it absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays. 
if it is present in the upper layers of the atmosphere. We will talk about the layers of atmosphere as we move forward. The next is water vapor. Water vapor the amount varies from place to place and it decreases with altitude. So if it is a kind of warm tropical area the water vapor would be as high as 4%. If it is a cold desert area or a polar area the content of water vapor would be uh, less than a 1%. So this amount varies from place to place and again decreases as you move from equator to poles. So towards the poles you have lesser amount of water vapor that is present and towards the equator you have the maximum amount of water vapor that is present. This water vapor also acts as a blanket because it absorbs the insulation or the incoming solar radiation and finally contributes to the stability and the instability in the atmosphere. We will be talking about stability and instability more as we move further. Now dust particle, a very very interesting phenomena about dust particle is these dust particles are present in high amount where there is dry wind. Now what would be the areas of dry wind? So the subtropical area and the temperate area, the percentage of dust particles would be very high as compared to the equatorial area or the polar area. As a result, you have maximum dust that would be present in the atmosphere would be in the subtropical and the temperate areas. Now these dust particles act as hygroscopic nuclei. We will study this when we talk more about cloud formation. So what happens is since they are hygroscopic nuclei, you have water vapor that condenses around this dust particle and you have the cloud formation that occurs. So cloud formation occurs as a result of the pre prevalent dust particles in the atmosphere and around those dust particles you have the water vapors that start to condense and fi finally clouds are formed. Now again these are concentrated mainly in the lower layers of the atmosphere. Coming on to the next feature, so this was about the composition of atmosphere. Now we will talk about the structure of atmosphere. Structure of atmosphere when we say there is a very interesting phenomena. You have the lowermost level and then a pause. Then you have another layer and then a pause and so on. So the lowermost layer is known as troposphere. So all the layers would be named as sphere and between the two layers that is being separated is a pause. So we call it tropopause. Then you have stratosphere and then you have stratopause. Then you have mesosphere and then you have mesopause. So this is the way, then you have ionosphere and exosphere. So these are the major layers in the atmosphere that we talk about. We will start with the first layer, the lowermost which is known as troposphere. Troposphere as we said is the lowermost layer. Average height is 13 kilometers varying from 8 kilometers in the polar areas and 18 kilometers in the equatorial areas. Again, as we said, it's 18 km in the equatorial areas. We can simply say the maximum thickness of the troposphere is seen in the equatorial region. And it is the, in this troposphere that most of the atmospheric processes takes place. And the temperature drop here is 1 degree Celsius for every ascent of 165 meters. So with every 165 meters, you would have fall in the temperature by 1 degree. And most of the biological activities also take place in the troposphere. Drop of pause, as we said, is a layer that separates stratosphere and troposphere. Now this ranges from minus 80 degrees in equator, the temperature, to minus 45 degrees at pole. So the equator, you have much more uh, cold temperature as compared to pole. That is again a very unique phenomena. And moreover, in the troposphere, uh, tropopause, as you can see, temperature remains constant and that means for the equator it would be around minus 80 always and for the poles it would be around minus 45 always. Now stratosphere is known to have the ozone layer that is present and it is in this ozone layer, it is this ozone layer that absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays. Now many of the students have come up asking questions as to in which layer you have the commercial jet planes that fly, 
in which layers you have the small planes and helicopters that fly fly so all the small planes chartered planes helicopters fly in the troposphere however the commercial jet planes fly in the lower stratosphere or the boundary between the stratosphere and the troposphere so that's again very very important stratosphere extends to a height of 50 kilometers beyond the stratosphere you would have the stratopause and then you have the mesosphere that extends up to 80 kilometers in the mesosphere as you can see the temperature decreases so on, and in the stratosphere you have the temperature that increases with height however under mesosphere temperature again decreases with altitude and reaches minus 100 degrees celsius at 80 kilometers so it becomes minus 100 degrees celsius at 80 kilometers next to it is ionosphere extends up to 400 kilometers and it is in this ionosphere that you have the various electrically charged ions that are present and these electrically charged particles are called as ions the main function of this ionosphere is to reflect the radio waves that are coming up so it reflects all the radio waves and again in the ionosphere you have the temperature that increases so as you can see for the temperature there is a kind of zigzag pattern that means with one layer it decreases with the next it increases then decreases and increases so that is the simple way to memorize how temperature moves with every layer exosphere is considered as the outermost layer highly rarefied and you do not have kind of much uh, gases that are present here so it's extremely rarefied that is exosphere now there are certain elements that are present in the climate most importantly when we talk about is the temperature and the pressure changes in the atmosphere temperature changes with the layers we already talked about we'll talk about this more as we move on to the next chapters so some of the major elements of climate change include temperature pressure winds humidity cloud and precipitation and again in the previous lectures we have already talked about this just a brief recap there is a difference between weather and climate so weather is a kind of day to day phenomena however climate is a phenomena that extends over a period of at least say 30 years or more so you have the climate that is governed or defined based on an extensive range of time period in contrast to weather so in this chapter we talked about the basic composition and the structure of atmosphere in the further chapter we will talk about winds and more features of climate so stay tuned do subscribe to our channel if you have any doubts or queries leave those as comment below the video have a very good day ahead